welcome everyone to Phillips Mill Art Talk. I'm your host, Laura Womack, and with me is our producer, Jen McHugh. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the Youth Art Show, which is now online for the first time. Events are not yet back in the Phillips Mill itself, but we're pleased that more people are able to see the work of these talented artists. The Phillips Mill Community Association is proud to have offered art arts activities for young people since its founding almost 100 years ago when children put on dramatics. We still have youth drama. The photography exhibition featured the work of young photographers for many years. And for several years now, photography, fine art, and sculpture have been combined in the youth art exhibition. Today, we're gonna to talk about how important art shows are for young artists, how worthy youth art is of our attention, and we'll also look at the work of our guests, three of whom are artists. We have a full panel this afternoon. We have Youth Art Exhibition founder, Kathy Schreyer, participating teacher, Andrew Wilkinson, and artist, Skylar Colley, who's been in both the Youth Show and the 91st Juried Show. We've also asked Art Talk's own Dennis Riley. Dennis is part of our producing team and he works on the Youth and Juried Shows. He's also a former school administrator, so we asked him to join, a, join the discussion for another perspective. We're very pleased to welcome all of you to Phillips Mill Art Talk. Okay, we're also glad to have the audience join us as well. We'll be taking your questions today. Please write them into the Q&A and we'll take those questions as we go along. So I'd like to jump right into looking at a few of the pieces in the Youth Art Exhibition to start. It's a very impressive show, and I really don't think it needs any qualification as a youth show. Uh, so as now um, Jen has that up, and uh, let's see some of the artwork and all, all four of you, if you'll please jump in with uh, your observations, memories, thoughts about the works in question. Here we have Woman in White by Isabella Rossi of the Pennington School. Uh, very talented piece. Kathy, you talk to us about this piece. White is really an interesting color because it's not just white. And what she's done is an amazing job with the folds of the fabric uh, with different tones of gray and different colors. She's also done an amazing job with the flesh tones. I mean, they're all different kinds of colors in there. It's terrific. It's, it, it's, it's, it's very mature. Um, it, it, this looks like something that an artist who's been painting for a really long time would have done. I agree. I think the white is, um, you know, white is a difficult, uh, white fabric is a very difficult texture to convey and uh, it's impressive. Skylar, do you have any thoughts? You're a painter as well. I think it's really complex and the uh, way that they did the, just anything that's like fluid like fabric is just really hard to do and that and skin tone. So it's like two very complicated things and so I think it's really good. It does look like a look like someone an adult would do for an accomplished artist. Right. All right. What do we what next, Jen? What is our next piece? Okay, this is uh, scattered by Andrew Zhang, the Hun School in Princeton. What are your thoughts? This is a very unusual piece, an acrylic subject matter. This is uh, this is a, a, a kind of art that you would not typically see in the adult show. Um, it, it, just such imagination. It, it, it's, it, I think it's stunning. I agree with you, Kathy. And that's one thing that really struck me about this show is um, the range of subject matter and the um, creativity in uh, the, the works that are portrayed. Uh, so I'm just so delighted with this show. Anyone else want to uh, make some observations about Scattered? 
a, a touch of surrealism and also with the youth art show sometimes i'm amazed at the uh, quote unquote objects that end up in some of the paintings you know sometimes really mundane everyday objects and sometimes they really smack of uh, youth there you go so definitely a different perspective what's up next jen Ah, oh, here we go. This is Shirley She, if I'm saying that correctly, untitled from the Stewart Country Day School. Um, Andrew, I believe this is one of your students, if I'm not wrong. It is, yes. Uh, she's a very talented uh, art student and photography student. And one of the things that um, I know I've learned about her is that she's interested in um, Wes Anderson, the film director. So there's a certain aesthetic that goes along with that, um, which sometimes is somewhat evident in her work. I can't remember what project this was for, because um, we do so many, but we do have a studio at school. So she used the props and the backgrounds and the strobe, the light kits, like a lot of advanced, advanced ideas creating this piece. This was one of, I think about half a dozen though. There was a whole sequence um, that also went into this surreal space using shadow play as well as props. It was very good. Uh, it was really pleasing. And the colors are really kind of true um, to the, um, the color of, of the backdrop. I remember the sort of coral color. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, did any other comments on this piece? Andrew, I, I, forgive me for not knowing, what is a digital image capture? I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's different from if it was a film, you know, photograph with film. Um, okay, we, if we need to go back and check that, we will do that on the art show. Sure, I would call it digital photograph. You know. okay. okay, great, thank you for that. And Jen? Okay, here we have Paranoid by Hannah Heston, Heston of Central Bucks High School South. I think probably another digital photo, digital image capture, I think is how we describe them on the website. What are your thoughts on this, Andrew? This is not your student, but it's certainly a stri striking work. Yeah, it's good. I really like things that are in sequence and especially long shot, medium shot close up. And there's a variant in tone that I'm seeing. I, I wonder if this student has um, been familiar with um, Francesca Woodman, um, who has a lot of work of anxiety of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she was a little bit older um, when she was producing the work, her, Francesca Woodman, um, but I'm very keen on it, you know, cause it's filmic. I mean, that's something that I like to talk about with um, my students and you don't really see enough of it is when people do uh, or create a diptych or a triptych, you know, they just sort of don't go there um, that often. And in a way, like this piece is relatable to what you would get from a photo booth, but the opposite um, emotional effect <laughs> from why you use a photo booth or if you used a photo booth. So it has a lot of curiosity to it. It's very good. So by filmic, I'm assuming you mean like, since it's uh, vertically presented instead of say horizontally, uh, we're looking at sort of uh, progression in the emotion, the, the scene that we're seeing. Yeah, especially because it's, you're reading it top to bottom or, or you, do, you can read it in any order, but if it's, if it's in a, a certain prescribed order, then the, the photographer is um, kind of controlling the visual information like where you travel or where your eye looks so in this column you maybe start in the middle and then go to the top and the bottom you know it's a good exploration because it pulls you around like emotionally with anxiety which is maybe the um maybe the point right like paranoid you know laura there's what's interesting about this is that there is uh there's a lot of emotion in the art that the students um that is shown at the at, at Phillips Mill, it, uh, you know, unlike the adult show, which typically is not emotional, there is 
there is a lot of feeling in the works that the students um, present. That's an interesting observation, Kathy. I mean, I definitely um, was struck by how different the subject matter was and the feeling for this show. And we all know that these are, this is mostly, um, uh, I think we're talking high school students here for, for all of the pieces. And that's a, that's a challenging time for all of us in our lives. So, but it's, uh, I love seeing them explore those emotions in their work. And, you know, maybe uh, it's something we can learn from the rest of us. I have to add to that. It's pretty brave, I think, for a younger group, younger audience of artists to do that. Um, you wonder if it's by um, direction of the instructor or if it was the, a, a topic or an emotional topic to explore, you know, where the creative brief came from without necessarily being prompted. You know, we've tried some things in the past about photographing all the emotions and then photographing uh, all different types of lighting that would be used in film to um, to show like film noir or sort of super bright lighting. So you, as a photographer, have this editorial control of what you want to do within that scene. Um, yeah, I think it's brave also. Jen, I think we've got a, com a question or a comment in the Q&A. Uh, yes, David Hewitt seems to have a couple of uh, comments about this dialogue, um, just saying a story and exposure. So I'm not sure if there was more to that, David. I think it, we are looking at a story here and uh, the exposure, I think maybe you talked about that a little bit, Andrew, in the, um, when you were talking about the different value, but I don't know if you want to expand on that at all. Uh, sure. Um, well, it, in, in an instance like this, it, I don't think it really matters, you know, like technically or anything, if it gets the feel across uh, I've known that to be very important to the young photographers that I work with. It's this aspect of, of vibe, right? So technical stuff doesn't have to necessarily be present unless it's learned and understood and then it's applied to it. Like, yeah, I know how to do this, but I would speculate the middle one was done with like a, you know, flashlight on an iPhone and then the camera on timer that kind of thing, probably all camera on timer and slightly slow shutter speed or the shutter speed has to be slow because it's low light. Probably the first one, the top one, I, I imagine was the intended effect, you know? Right. So from a technical point of view, yeah, you know, it's gonna be slightly overexposed, but to me, I, th I like the way that that goes, you know, especially with the tonality that I'm seeing on my monitor where there's gray tones, um, sepia tones, and even further darker brown. Yeah. It's a nice uh, word. Yeah. I just wanted to say that I am glad in the youth show that they do have the photography and that, I mean, I can tell with a piece like this, they've done more than just take a photo on an iPhone, like they have worked with it. Um, but I think that um, it's kind of hard, it's kind of hard for like the jury to compare like a photo that someone took so like a painting might have taken someone like six months when like looking for something that's best in show. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that photography is kind of its own thing in the show and the painting, I think they're almost like two shows within the show mm -hmm. because the photography is just, it's just has a different feel. Like this thing I'm looking at reminds me of like, of like a horror movie I'd watch with my friends or something. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a great observation, Skylar. And um, let's come back to the rest of the show, Jen, and, and go to Kathy now and talk about that because uh, uh, the photography folks at Phillips Mill, Spencer Saunders and uh, a bunch of photographers had a separate show uh, than the, the jury to art show, which is um, painting and fine art and sculpture. And Kathy, you have it all together in the youth art show, which is interesting. I think it's great. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Um, sure. Um, 
so th this was not a brilliant idea. This was just a, hey, I'm looking around the mill, I'm looking at the calendar, and we have a lot of empty space on the calendar. It's basically the mill was empty from December through, say, April, maybe late March. And we're so lucky to have the mill. It's just a fabulous space. So my, my idea was, let's use it and let's, let's play off what the um, photo people did for years, which was to have a youth component. Um, they had stopped that some years before we started the youth art exhibition. And, uh, but playing off what they had started, let's just bring young people back into the mill. And so the first year we said, and we've said this every year, if you have a photography program in your school, at least one of your submissions has to be a photograph. So we wanted to make certain that it wasn't just, um, it was not limited to fine art the way the adult show is, but could be expanded to include all kinds of, uh, of other art forms, including um, sculpture included not only sculpture, but it included things like furniture. It included things that were fine crafts or, or artisan kind of stuff. Um, so it's mostly been geared toward, let's see all the great talent that's out there. And there is just amazing talent out there. I think that's very clear, yeah. So you work with the teachers. Uh, the teachers do the selection of the artwork, is that right? Yes, yes, this, this, was, this was the most, this, uh, I thought this was genius, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I had served on the art committee and I know how much work that is. And you have a receiving day, you have all these artists come in, it's you know, blah, 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 it's over days. You know, I knew if, if we made it that hard, it would, have, it would happen once, <laughs> that would be it. So what we did was in, engage the art teachers to select and curate essentially the show. So they choose what's going to be displayed. They bring it to this to uh, to Phillips Mill. We hang it. We display it. At the end of the show, they pick it up. So it's a lot of work on the teacher's part, but um, they seem to like it, right, Andrew? <laughs> yes, uh, <I> like it. <laughs> uh, the other great thing that the mill did was we don't charge um, an admission fee. We don't charge. Um, a, a commission on sales. It is an entirely mill supported and donor supported operation. And I think that, I, you know, it's like giving back to the community in a way that um, you often don't get a chance to do. So I think it's terrific. And it was easy for us to do. <laughs> I think it's a great show. It's a great art show. And I'm always impressed by the quality of it. But I think it's really terrific to have a place to see, um, you know, young artists. I don't, I, I hate to qualify it because every time you see it, you think it's not, it's not artists who need to grow into themselves. They already have really well-developed skills. And, you know, and as we've seen, you know, the subject matters that they're dealing with is really interesting and sophisticated. You know, Laura, that's a great point because I think typically you would not be able to see the art of, of people this age unless you had a kid in high school. You would not be able to see the, the, the breadth of, of talent that's out there in the region. And I think that's really an important thing. I was just, I was just gonna add almost analogous to the tradition of Philip Spill over the years. There's a tradition with the youth art show with the participating school districts and the individual art teachers. So for those who participate year after year after year, there's a tradition in that. And, you know, it's really organic and um, through word of mouth and through the passion of the art teachers directly to the, from the students, to the art teachers, to the committee and back to Phillips Mill, you know, the art teachers are really, and the students are the heart of it, yeah. So Andrew, you don't have a lot of places to display student work, is that right? Well, there's places within the school, but that's just within the school bubble. And every other school has that same challenge, right? No matter how many shows they program a year, it's just with, for the community of the school, whether we've got, you know, whatever the, the dynamic is now with remote learners and in-school learners. Yeah, sure, like mobility is really limited and very difficult. So that issue still exists. So it's, it's sort of 
um, when it's physically in Phillips Mill, it's this perfect hub for all of these high schools to come into one place. And it also justifies, I think, to um, not only the teachers, but the students, but their, their work qualifies because it's outside of the school environment. I think a parent is more um, likely to wanna come to an event like that and see other types of other work from other high schools. So as a measure, it has to be all of that different type of um, media because each school has a different area of concentration. You know, like maybe one does more ceramics and one does more wood work or whatever it is. You know, but there's always a base, right, of painting, photography, drawing, that kind of thing. Um, so it becomes not only this really positive experience for, you know, the high school itself, because then they can promote it through the high school, like, great, we're in a show outside of our, our walls, you know, but then it serves the community as well, if, if they want to come and take a look. So it sort of works in all of these areas. Well done, Kathy. Well done, indeed. Skylar, what does it mean to you? I mean, you've now graduated to the adult show, but you were in the youth art show for three years. I think you were um, one of the first or the first to be participate as a sophomore and you participated for three years. What did that mean for you? Uh, yes, at my school, it was almost always seniors work who went to the show, but um, the art teacher chose to put, I think, 10th grade, it was a 3D book, so it was almost like a sculpture. Um, and it meant a lot because not only because I was young, but also because we had the opportunity to sell. That was what I did in 10th grade. And um, the opportunity to sell the work was really special, even though I didn't sell anything until 12th grade. But I think it was a great chance to just show my work and um, just see what other because i knew what kids in my class were doing in my school but just see what other kids my age my peers were doing and how complex their work was i think it helped me make my work more complex and i saw a lot of people were doing oils and then in junior and senior year that's when i really started doing it. decided that was my favorite medium so it helped me really get into the medium. i think we're looking at some of your work from the first year you participated here you want to talk about it a little bit, orient us? It was just paper cutouts, a lot of kind of collage, just with drawing. Um, it's almost like an accordion book. And it took me half a semester to do, but we were only needed to raise a week. But then if we go to 11th grade, I think I, I believe I sent Jen, I did Still Life Flag. And that was with my, we had a new art teacher at my school who encouraged a lot of still lives. And then finally in senior year, that's when I really started doing a lot of oils. And that's the painting that I sold to Dennis. Right. Dennis was your purchaser. Dennis, you, you are a supporter of the arts in many realms. Yeah, I, it was really special because I happened to uh, sit at the reception desk and had the pleasure, you know, two or three times. And then I also went to the reception night. And after sitting there a couple of times, you know, you walk around the room one way, then you go the other way and you go back and look at things. And this, Skylar's painting was right in front of me. And, you know, the mystery of it, you know, and then I talked to him a little bit about it. I believe it was Halloween night in Lamberville. And, um, then I got to meet Skyler and we got to chat and he showed me some of the other work on his phone that he was doing. So it was a nice personal connection. I don't normally, I hate to generalize this, but I'm usually drawn a little more to color. So this was a little darker and mysterious and, but it totally captured me. And so I was really pleased, just very pleased with the, um, with, the, with his oil. Yeah. That's great. Let's go back and look at, um, we have a few more images from the youth art exhibit. We'll also look at our guests artwork. Uh, we don't want to uh, show all of the works from the show because we'd love you to go online and see the full range. Uh, but here we are back. Ah, here we go. Um, Kate Hendricks, self portrait. Again, there's a lot of emotion here. This is a colored pencil and embroidery thread from the New Hope Solberry High School. 
And let's talk about this one a little bit. Kathy or Dennis or anyone who wants to. I can make a mask say something. Oh, I think there when I went around the show in all the past years, I would, this is not meant because I know that my art is not perfect. There are things like I see that I would hang on my wall, and then there are things that I say that's interesting and it's, it's like thought provoking, but it's not it's not my style that I can appreciate it. And I think that's what's interesting about the show is that there is a lot of that stuff at the show. And um, you know, some of it is some of it appeals to certain people and some doesn't, but I think it's interesting just to see that diversity really is. That's right. Art is very personal, isn't it, Skylar? Yes. Yeah. This one also, I think um, we were talking before about how brave um, the students are to share uh, some of the motion, emotion and really explore those thoughts. Would um, someone like to talk about that for Kate? I think she's definitely shared with us here. I think it's especially brave to do that in a self-portrait. Um, that, that takes a lot of guts. I mean, even to do a self-portrait, I think, takes a lot of guts. But to do it in this way is, um, yeah, is, is very, impressive. very impressive. It shows a maturity. I, I have no idea how old this person is, but it's it, quite, quite a mature vision of herself. I agree. And um, as someone who works with textiles, I love to see embroidery thread incorporated in. We don't often see a lot of textile art at the mill. We have had some in the adult show in, in recent years, um, but this is a, a, a powerful piece. Jen, I think um, Jim has some thoughts about that. Uh, Jim was just very, uh... He said, wonderful that youth art is being encouraged. I was lucky enough to be given lessons from an early age and have practiced, uh, have spent my life doing nothing else. So proud of the teachers. Jim is a committed artist, I know that for sure. Um, and we also are proud of the teacher, teachers as well. Okay, Jen, what do I think we have, do we have more? In the youth art show. This is Bubble Bursting Blues, Andrew Hansen. Uh, this is an honorable mention, works on paper uh, from Holy Ghost Prep. It's a watercolor. Uh, who would like to talk about this one? Watercolor is so hard. I mean, I started out fooling around with watercolor and it's just a really hard medium. It, it's very un. It, or not very unforgiving, but it's really hard to make changes. Right. Unlike acrylics or oils or other stuff. So I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> There's no going back, right? Absolutely. Right. All right, Jen, are we, ah, here we go. This is a sculpture piece. Oh, wow. uh, Ethan Weggle, COVID's Crying Eye from Upper Dublin High School. Uh, and Jen, I think this might be a student from one of our artists. Is that right? Uh, I was thinking probably John Rogers. Uh, if you remember, he was on a previous episode. He's a sculptor that's shown in at Phillips Mill for several years. Yeah, I think consistently. It's that's marvelous. Uh, any comments here? Insights into this work? Congratulations to Ethan, and um, if we're correct, John Rogers as well. Cheeky. Emily uh, Neppers, I'm going to say. Uh, Solberry School. <laughs> 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 Kathy. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> it's really well done, isn't it? This is clay. All right, very good. Thank you very much for the slideshow, Jen. Thanks for putting that together. Um, let's look at some of our guest work. Um, Skylar, we've seen a little bit of yours and I'd like to, um, to look at your, the last piece you did for the Youth Art Show, 
uh, and then look at the um, works that you had in the adult show this last year. Okay, again, just a reminder, because I think, um, Skylar, you have, I think you're interested in the evening, if I may say so. Let's see the one of the pieces that came into the uh, 91st. There we go. Okay, we both have them both on one slide. And you have Night in the Village um, that was in this last year's show. Skylar, you have an interest in nighttime scenes? Yes, I do like the nocturnes. Um, working with the light is hard, but I think that they give, I like the mystery of it. And this is, I took this photo out of my aunt's window and right down. She lives in like a house from the 1700s. The windows, the windows aren't as crooked as scenes, my version of it, but the glass is a little bit distorted because it's so old. And I think that I like painting older buildings, older houses in these landscapes and right. um, just at night, but there's also warmth in them and they don't photograph well. So the one that I, at the youth art exhibition, the one I sold to Dennis, that one also didn't photograph perfectly. It's actually a little bit darker in person, but get the feeling of the, the mystery, I guess. It's very moody. That's one of the issues we've had with um, going online is that we um, uh, getting photographing works of art, uh, paintings and the drawings, et cetera, for they don't, some works photograph better than others. So um, Skylar, you are quite an enterprising artist um, already. You're now in college. You are at, um, Remind me where you're going to school. College of New Jersey. College of New Jersey. You've started a business. You have a greeting card business from your original works. Is that right? Yes. So people would always say, like, I, would, I used to make my parents greeting special, like handmade greeting cards for all the holidays and special occasions. And people come to our house and see them and always want to want me to make them for them and buy them. And so I made a website and I did a business. And as I added things, I saw what people liked, they didn't like. And I know you got a glimpse of like the painting of the Mercedes. And I noticed that people really loved the cars that I made um, that I would paint for them. And so that's been something that people really like to buy from me and my landscapes and cityscapes. So it's been a lesson in learning, even if it's not my favorite thing to make, it's what the people learn. So me a lot about business and that's great are you um are you still doing the card business yes because i've been home and i've been remote so i've been able to stay up. okay and how is it going it's still good i constantly just see what people buy and what they don't like and you know, taking things down adding new products based on what they are sold better but i keep pretty small amount of things people can choose from just to make it easier for anyone to do. So those are the cars and people even people love them. They're not the most complex thing, but people really do like them. They're great. Well, and you're you're majoring in business, is that right? With a yes. art minor? Yes. And so we've heard from several artists on Art Talk about how important it is for artists to be business people. So you're already in the swing of it. The website's been like, it's kind of combined my two interests of business and art, so it's been a nice, nice lesson on That's great. And you and your mother co-authored a book, is that right? Um, <laughs> please remind me. <laughs> did I get that wrong? I looked you up, I did a little cyber stalking, so am I wrong about that? I about think when I was like, I think when I was 10 years old, I think we wrote a book about our pets. And I think, I think that's what might have come up when you looked me up. I actually didn't remember. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just glad I didn't get it wrong. Okay, well, again, very enterprising. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, let's look at now, Jen, please. Let's look at some of uh, Andrew Wilkinson's work. Uh, yes. Tell us about this, Andrew. 
Well, that's a, a sort of a multi-layered photo of a chapel in Harbiton. So I've done recently a whole series of these little places of assembly, but it's using a lot of different um, techniques. So I have a camera that will shoot digital infrared and, you know, with the wide angle lens, obviously, and kind of walk around the space, gather a lot of, um, a lot of shots. You can't quite really see what you've got in the camera um, when you're doing that because the digital negative is pretty much all red. So it's not until you start to go through some processing do you see if it worked or if it didn't really work. And the, um, from a technical point of view, it's rather volatile, you know, if you over or underexpose by a tiny little bit. But the project was inspired by Wendell White, who's a African-American photographer that did a series on what he called was the colored schools during the times of segregation. And it was always a project that really moved me. And I'd seen it in person in a gallery many years ago. And then I was reminded of it again. And I was like, oh, this is so successful because it isolates the school and the environment that it's in. And he solved all these other problems along the way, like photographically and in terms of presentation. So I wanted to do my own version of it, but use digital infrared and then, um, from a process point of view, um, draw a clipping path around the piece that I wanted to stand out and then change the opacity of the background. And then at that point, I was getting into mirroring and folding just to change the, the context of the space and how we see. It's such a great building. Where is the, where is this building? That one's in Harbiton. So that's a little village on the way to um, Hopewell through all the back roads. So obviously during, you know, isolated times when your travel is rather minimal, you know, I started to notice these things that I've always wanted to take photos of. And then it was, it stood for a place of assembly, much like, you know, Wendell White's, you know, schools during times of segregation. So this, in this particular instance, you know, it's not really used as many places that can't have gatherings right now. So I did quite a few in this series already, even though I just sort of started it. And then I opened it into these uh, to, to include other, other things using the same process, sort of wide open spaces. There's a bunch of other ones that ended up turning into more science fiction-y type of ideas, which I kind of liked because the colors got all wacky. I didn't mess around with them. I did very minimal post-production, but it just sort of, depending on the, the time of day or the type of light, if it was overcast or if it was sunny and bright, what would happen with uh, digital infrared. Hey, let's take a look at some of your other works here. I think we have more from this series. Yeah, tell yeah, us that's the same chapel. So that's once all the work has been done, it's just folding it in all these different ways and trying to make it, trying to present it a certain way. I'm very sort of orderly with, with the way I work sometimes to have several within the series that are, you know, landscape view or horizontal and one or two that are vertical or maybe one or two that are square and sort of look at them all and see which ones work the best. Sometimes I will go back in and make changes um, reluctantly. Um, but I'm, I'm very pleased with how these turned out, like these sort of burnt orange tones. It's not what I expected. So like I said, you can't really tell what's going to happen until you start to go through various sequences of software. Uh, yeah. Jen, let's see the next slide, please. Yeah. Mark, is, and is this the same building again? Yeah, it's the same one, you know, so I wanted to do, obviously when you start to mirror things, um, you know, you can fold it in all sorts of different ways, like horizontally, vertically, and again and again. In, in other ways, I've done this in, in video where I've consciously um, not had things in the center so that I'm on one third, like the left or the right, so that when it is folded around, then there's all this negative space. 
But in these cases, yeah, these things were straight in the middle. What I did really want to do or include was all of the wires and the lines. And that's something that Wendell White had done. So if there was some odd like electrical box or something like that, you know, for these schools in many in uh, an urban environment, that stuff I would call street furniture. So if you want to get a shot of something, a lot of the times it's kind of in the way. And as a photographer, you have to sort of accept what is in the way. You can't change that unless you want to edit it out, but that's altering the truth, right? So I was sort of very keen on the inclusion of all of these things in the space, like all of these power lines or boxes or trees hanging over. I think we have a pandemic. We have some pieces from a pandemic series that you did. Yeah. Yeah, this is for my fashion beauty charm series. I took a class with Eleanor Carucci at the School of Visual Arts in September. And uh, the title of the workshop was Photography During Times of Pandemic. So I was really interested to see what she had to say and how she was an instructor, how she led the class. And truth, it was quite um, an obvious display of, um, you know, people's world, you know, like living in one house or, you know, people lounging around a lot. I was I'm lucky that I have a studio. So I've got different places that I can work. So this was studio work. The, the other stuff, the infrared chapels were obviously out in the field, but it, like technically this is natural light. So there is this quite this exploration of identity and from a prop point of view, like I had a bunch of those masks and whatnot that we're all buying more and more of. And I always found it very weird, you know, seeing people in the, in the supermarket and, you know, in the supermarket parking lot, the hardware store or ever, and you can't see who they are. Like they can't see you, you can't see them. So they can't, you can't kind of tell what somebody's like. And that's sort of a real basic point of identity in photography that people really engage with is the face, you know, like how different are we? So I bought all these other masks from the dollar store near my studio and put them behind the stretchy mask and did a bunch of shots on timer. So with this series, I did a lot. I, I went to my studio, like, I don't know, half a dozen times or so, because you're covering yourself up and you can't see what you're doing. And then you've got the camera on timer or with the remote. And then you have to get up, take everything off, like see the framing and all of that. So it was really difficult to produce. So I reached an end point with it. But from a um, sort of an art direction point of view, I did consciously lay out all of the outfits and the colors and the masks like I was looking at them it was all you know prescribed and thought through once I did one or two of the test shots and I was like okay this is certainly strange enough like alarming and arresting like in its simple form you know so I'm really pleased with how all those turned out Laura, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. We, we've got, I've got some background noise here, so my apologies, everyone. Um, they also have a lot of emotion in them, Andrew, and um, I'm just wondering what it's like as an art teacher, you've got your own work, and then how much, how do you share that with your students? How much of your work do you bring into the classroom? Mm, you know, maybe sometimes I bring too much in, I don't know, I mean, I. It's, um, I would do it, I would show the work, just sort of this, these two sides of me, the art side and the commerce side, you know, like, you know, photography can make money in commercial terms as a utility, but you can still explore it as an artist as well. So I like that intersection of art and commerce. So I like to show studio work and out in the field work, and then like completion of series, that kind of thing. So I'll, I'll use it kind of as an example, you know, here and there, like, oh, here's something that I wanted to do that was like a series of black and white double exposures. And I set myself a limit, you know, or a boundary where I had to have a bicycle in the shot or and a doorway, just sort of to give these students an idea of you can set up a, a bunch of rules or categories to explore. So, you know, I mean, maybe I'd show some and they wouldn't, we wouldn't care at all, you know, and then maybe I'd show some and they would be 
like into it. You can never tell. So I can't, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about the, um, the series that was inspired by Wendell, Wendell White. And I was wondering, it used to be quite a standard uh, practice to um, do, I think you use the term emulation. Um, you know, it, artists used to paint what other, what it, some other master artist had painted before. And I wonder if that is still um, something that is uh, an academic means of teaching and communication. I it guess is. we can learn from other people's work when we or, look at that process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do it in a different way now. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll bring it back, but in the past, those projects were very successful to do like a copy me project or an inspired by project. And um, it was really cool that what the students would pick to explore and some of them had, had done them so well that it was, it really raised even more questions. I remember looking, I can look in Google slides to see what they've turned in. And uh, one student did a particularly amazing job of like Ralph Eugene meat yard work. Like it was, you know, basically she created Ralph Eugene meat yard forgeries. It was amazing. And I remember looking in this one um, sort of turning in part of the projects and this, I was like, oh, the student didn't do it. Like it was half finished, like for a Sally Mann, famous shot of these children with like a little cart and one is on stilts and one's holding a cigarette. And I was like, oh, she just like hasn't finished her project. She created it so exactly that I could not believe it, you know, like measure for measure, like the neighborhood kids with the right color hair, the, the view with the path, you know, the only slight difference was the, um, the date of the cart, you know, the time period at which it was done, you know, how it was produced. So some are very, very successful, others go totally off the rails. And it's like, well, that's nothing like, you know, what, <laughs> the, what the plan was so um to your point i bring up discovery of process and methods in a different way now to lead to it i feel that it's certainly more of an advanced um well mid-level uh discovery project to do an inspired by than how much i used to like foist it on the intro photo one students that could you know not quite ready for that I think we have some artwork from that that project that you were talking about from one of your students. Is that right, Jen? Yeah. This um, this isn't exactly from that um, type of project, but strangely, that's the student that did so much work on Ralph Eugene Meat Yard that at one point for a, a discovery project, I think she did like an 80 slide presentation. I think it was more work than in some books of him. Um, so this is a particularly talented photographer. She's sort of a bit more of a filmmaker now in ways. Um, and she's working remotely in China. So um, we work asynchronously now in the final parts of this class. Um, so that I, I can't remember. It might have been a lighting um, exploration project in the studio. It's a really remarkable portrait. Yeah. Skylar, do you, um, this sort of um, emulation process or taking inspiration from um, another artist's work, was that part of your curriculum as well? Yes, we did some of that. And um, a lot of working on photographs and things like that. Um, and I think we did, I remember, well, I had two art teachers when I was at Holy Ghost. But um, we would always be showing an artist's work and then kind of take, we'd always have the freedom to do what we wanted, but we, a lot of what we did was based on someone's work. Did you find that helpful to look at another artist's work and start working in that form? Sometimes, depended on what the medium was and what we were doing. But later on in senior year, it was a lot of. I was working on photographs I took on my phone or I would take two photos, one with like buildings and then a photo of a sunset and then I combine them into one painting. So there was a lot of that. Right. Right. 
Jen, let's go to the back to the youth art show. Um, I think we have, yeah. This is a wonderful piece. Would someone like to talk about this? We, we don't have the name here, unfortunately. I apologize for that. Dennis? Well, fairly obvious, you know, just the, well, the contrast between the black and the um, beige color tabletop and then the medium brown. So you've got some color contrast. You've got all the interesting shapes below. Um, for whatever reason, I'm, you know, my eyes kind of drawn to, you know, the little circle off to the left side, different kind of a shape. The others are more linear and that's, you know, that's a loop round. So maybe my head is doing the loop too. Um, yeah, it's an interesting piece and, you, you know, the more you look at it, you start thinking, hmm, would I like that? You know, could it be functional? Could it be used? Um, does it need to be used? Would it be, would it change if there were objects placed on top, if there were vases or photographs? But yeah, I, I like the simplicity and the abstractness altogether of the piece, yeah. I think so too. I like the, um as you say, the piece that is a little more circular because it gives some tension to the piece and that it's uh, not in line with the rest of the items. And Jen has shared with us that this is Anya Betoff of the George School. Okay, what else do we have, Jen, from the Youth Art Show? Um. Meanwhile, oh. yep. Let me get something. Hold on, let me look. All right. <laughs> Kathy, you're on mute. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. <laughs> so that was an example of something that is a, a, a functional piece that would probably not be accepted into the adult show because it is functional, but it is, it's gorgeous. <laughs> And, and um, while it's not, I wouldn't call it sculpture, uh, it is just exquisitely, exquisitely made um, and deserves to be seen. So I'm glad there's a youth art show that allows this kind of work to be shown. I agree, Kathy, and the, um, the juried show for 18 and above we don't take craft. And sometimes that's a fine line of um, what is craft and what isn't. And usually more functional objects are, are um, not considered. It's a challenge for the show, make the show organizers as well. Okay, and here we have um, some more textile and garment pieces. I mean, there really is quite a range. What do you think, Kathy? Jen, I know is gonna get us some information about this. Travis, this, this is amazing. This is just amazing. <laughs> that, and if you can see the the back, the back is even more amazing than the front. I don't know if you see if you see the back. This is best in show, right? Uh, the best in show, I think, is the rope dress, which is this is honorable okay, men okay. three dimensional work. Yeah. It, it, what, what craft? Yeah. You know, what skill? It, it's, it's incredible. Absolutely. And here we have, this was the uh, best in show. Would you like to talk about this, Kathy or Dennis, anyone? Yeah, I don't dress up, but if I had a body like that, I'd wear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty great piece. And what I think what's marvelous about it is the unusual use of materials. Yes, uh, here for this is made from rope. Uh, it's by Macy Calf. Uh, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Jen. Um, she won Best in Show and also this year Artspan. Um, we're very grateful to them. They have come up with a, uh, they've given her, in addition to the cash prize from our donors, they've given her a professional website on their art hosting. Uh, platform. So that's a great piece. 
thought, I thought it was interesting the juror, the juror when she wrote a paragraph about this piece said she could envision this young woman, assuming it's a woman, come walking into a party, you know, with the with the skirt moving. So I thought that was kind of interesting that it really spoke to the juror and awarding it best in show. And we had um, the juror for this show. Uh, well, the Kathy, Kathy, as you said, the um, teacher selected the work that would be in the show, but we had one of the jurors from the 91st juried 18 and above show uh, worked on this show for the prizes. Is that right, Kathy? Yes. Yes. So we're very grateful to Diane Marimo for her help on that as well. OK. So let's see. Do we have another piece, Jen? Uh, well, what would you like to see from painting, works on paper, photography, or more 3D? We haven't seen a work on paper, is that right? Let's see. Well, we were... So next year, Kathy, you're going to have the show both live in the mill and also online, is that right? We hope to, yeah. But actually, that's not my choice. Susan, Susan Brusak will figure that out. That's right, she's organizing it now. She's the head of that show. This is a marvelous piece. Would anyone like to talk about this? Yeah. Talk about emotion. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Dennis? And, and what's interesting about it is that, as, as Andrew said, it's, it's um, I'm not going to use the word easy. It is not uncommon to see emotion in photography. It is way more uncommon to see emotion in drawings, in, in, uh, in 2D arts. And this, I, I think, would be graphite. Now, I have one that I bought um, a couple of years ago at the Youth Art Show. It's a woman, a young woman, just you know, ah, in tears. You know, she's, she's horrified. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I continue to be so impressed with how these young artists are able to display and record really serious um, emotion that I, you, I, I typically don't see in adult work. It's raw. It was, it was interesting this morning on CBS uh, Sunday morning, they showcased a famous artist named uh, Stella, last name, and he was being interviewed with these huge sculptures of stars in a garden. And he talked about uh, that they looked very comfortable. And the interviewer said, what do you mean that, that the sculpture looks comfortable? And he talked about the feeling of the sculpture, you know, that they actually felt comfortable in that particular place, in that particular setting. And that was just very interesting, bringing back to the, what you were getting at, the feeling again. So this work is by Emma Gibson from the Pennington School. It's silver nitrate. And the previous piece was Maggie Livesey. Uh, she won second place for works on paper from Solberry School. It is a pencil piece. Uh, it was done in pencil. And um, all right, we're going to take a quick comment from Andrew. Oh, sorry, Jen. Can we go back to the photograph again? And I was going to ask Andrew for a quick comment. And then I'd like to look at Kathy's work. Yeah, Andrew, what do you think of this photograph? Well, photographing white things is difficult, like it is with painting, you know, especially technically with the exposure with the camera. I imagine that's if it was a film shot. Uh, I know where it is, so I already have um, in fact, I'm pretty sure where it is. Um, this sort of point of engagement with it. I mean, to me, it seems to like it's about geometry, you know, geometry floating in space with all of these lines, especially the shadow of the cone and the, the elevated door. Um, these parts. So it's a bit of street photography. 
and I don't know if that is a figure standing in the alley or that side part on the left. Maybe it is. I think the shadows add quite a bit of interest here uh, because as you say, there's an underlying uh, geometry and there's the uh, shadows that sort of work against that simplicity of the context. Hmm. Well, I'm pretty keen on, on photos that have multiple stories in them and they, they have divides. So there's a divide on the left, like the left fifth, if that is a person, because we have another plane that goes back in space, because it's all this one plane other than the, and then there's the slope, which is our, our foreground. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a curious subject matter, you know, in a way it reminds me of Lee Friedlander a little bit, you know, that photograph on bright days for that reason. So you get this additional geometry into the, into the shot. So I'm going to quickly go, uh, my apologies, Kathy, for not leaving much time, but I'd like to take a quick look at some of your abstract works. We normally see, uh, we see quite a few flowers from you and I, uh, and, but I know that you have been working with abstract as well. I'd like to take a quick look at that because I think it's important to see, uh, you know, your artwork and why you're so clearly very passionate about the youth art show. Talk to us about this, Kathy, oil and cold wax. Uh, um, well, I'll tell you the technical thing. The technical thing is that the thing, the orange spot in the middle was in the wrong spot to be the attention getter, which is why I added, added three red spots to the upper right hand corner. Yeah. And what I like about this is that there are unusual color combinations, but I think they are still pleasing. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> I love the color. Uh, I also agree that they're a pleasing color combination. And I think that your um, abstract work has a lot more, your, your has a lot more vibrant color in it. Your flower pictures are very soothing palette. And here I'm seeing a lot more color from you. Mm. This, this one, I'm not sure I like, I'm not sure it's done. And I'm not sure it's in the, I keep changing the orientation. <laughs> which was what you can do with an abstract. Um, I am not happy with the kind of beigey stuff going on. So it's probably not done. And what's great about abstracts is you keep going in okay. and change them till you like them. All right, let's take a look at one of your um, floral paintings that you're known for. Here we go. Love the color of these blossoms. Yeah, I like those two. I'm not sure about the shadow. I think the shadow of the vase is not quite right. It's probably too too strong. Um, but I, I am happy with how the vase turned out, which turns out to be a pretty hard vase to paint. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. I might not be done with that either. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing those with us. And um, Kathy, thanks for that. I'd just like to, if you want to wrap us up with um, some thoughts about, you know, we were talking earlier about how emotional and um, the, the youth artwork is. And is that perhaps inspiring to you as an artist? I'm not emotional as an artist. I am, I'm like mostly, I'm, I'm in there, I'm working every day, you know grinding them out, practicing. It's, it's actually practicing a craft and getting better at it. The more you do it, the better you get at it, duh. Um, <laughs> but what I, what I find so interesting about what these young folks do is they invest more of their persona in it, uh, their, their feelings, their emotions, their what's going on in their lives. And I find that, I mean, if as a grown up, I'm not sure I'm, I would be willing to do that, but I am very impressed that they are. And I am so grateful that they do. And I am 
just delighted, totally delighted with this show every year. It gets better because there are more of them. It's a really remarkable show. I also think it's a fabulous show this year. Um, I hope you will all go and take a, take a look at the show at phillipsmill.org. You'll see a link to the youth art show. Kathy Schreyer, Andrew Wilkinson, Skylar Colley, and Dennis Riley, thank you all very much for sharing your work and your thoughts about the youth art exhibition. It's a terrific show. Thank you also to our producer, Jen McHugh. Next month, the Phillips Mill Photography Exhibition opens. This year, it focuses on the work of members of Phillips Mill, and we're excited to talk with show, show founder Spencer Saunders and photographer Donna Lovely. That's April 11th. We also, on the 25th, will look at a friendship forged in art with prominent local artists Tom Chesser and Richard Lennox. We'll look at both of their work. Uh, you can find a registration link on phillipsmill.org and we'll send an email uh, to those of you who are on our distribution list. Thank you everyone in the audience for spending an hour with us and thank you to all of our guests for spending an hour with us on this lovely spring Sunday. I'm Laura Womack. Have a good evening.